So I'm back again talking about reinvention with Holly Tuckett. And if you haven't listened to the first interview, part one with Holly, you'll want to go back because she winds this weave of, of story. It's a, it's a reinvention tale that is classic that you can't connect the dots until you've got to the point where she is. And when you're going through it, it probably sounds like, how does any of this get me where I need to go? But the one thing that she kept doing was persisting and going to the next step and the next and the next. And sometimes it was painful to go through some of the, the bridge work that she had to do to get to the other side. But that's a fantastic example that while your story may not be like Holly's, the concepts are universal that she went through of persisting, of connecting uh, one, one experiment with another, listening to herself, finding out what she loved, learning what she did well, and not settling. So Holly, is that a fair setup for what people will hear when they listen to the first uh, part one of this interview series when they hear your story? Yeah, absolutely. I think they'll, they'll kind of go, okay, wait, where, where is she? Cause it's all over the place. So, <laughs> and I kind of think when you're, when you're unsure of what path you are going to take, but that there is something that's calling you, telling you you're on the wrong path. Um, a lot of times, you know, that you're on the wrong path, but you don't know what's next. And so I do think that sometimes the experimentation, as you will call it, of experimenting with things is, um, it's important um, because you don't want to um, just settle. You know, you don't, you don't want to be like, okay, I'm jumping out of this into something else and then only to realize, oh, that didn't work. Right. And, and I, I don't, I don't necessarily like I made the leap too soon or I didn't do enough dabbling and sticking my toe in to see if that was really where I want to be. Right. Um, so I do think that that's, uh, that's an important thing is to do some discovery. Um, and I think that in my story, you know, there was a couple of, there was definitely some places where I knew that I wasn't on the right path anymore. Um, but it was, really unsure of what was next and right. so um I was lucky that I had um people around me to kind of be supportive during those times when I wasn't kind of sure what my next step was um my family and and my girlfriend and things like that you know being those um both monetary and um voices in the head support. Yes. Um, so, so I do think that, you know, there were points in my journey where I think, you know, when I was at the post office, I knew I didn't want to be at the post office anymore, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And uh, you I were there, but you didn't know what was next. Did not know what was next. And so I started going and assessing what, what things am I good at? What things am I interested in? Um, and I think I even had a conversation with you kind of about that. Um, there was a point where we, I think, pinpointed potentially my, my background in physical education and, and training um, as an as a avenue. And I actually did pursue um, personal training as, as a career path and got got my certification you know while i was still employed at at the postal service right um so what what i'm hearing is you you you're hitting on something we have possible selves inside of us like we have potential to become you know with your we met playing on the same softball team yeah um you had interest in training you had interest in physical fitness and so you took that and ran with it for a while. And mm -hmm. then you had your educator that, you know, hat that you could put on that when you were working in training and human behavior and what you call HR, then you went into, well, I could add the training to that, but then you went into the coaching. So yeah. you saw different possible selves and you explored pieces of those, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. 
you crafted and executed uh, experiments, and then you kept role models, mentors, uh, coaches, people around you so you didn't stay in what I call your navel lint, which is self reference <laughs> and dark and damp and can grow things that are not healthy. Right. And you have your own ability to uh, hear other people giving you those um, voices of reason. So I want you to dive in for just a minute because we prepped for this. We primed yeah. for the interview. And I'm wondering what's coming up for you right now that you want to speak to where you can connect some of these concepts we're talking about to what you experienced. Well, I think um, in experimenting, it, it gives you that ability to, to test the waters, you know, and, and so doing those inventories of like, what am I good at? What am I interested in? Mm -hmm. And making lists for lack of a better way of doing it. Um, you know, listing those things out uh, and then doing little, little stints of experimentation. And so, you know, I, I did dabble in actually, training and i i found a mentor locally who was a trainer that i i walked into his gym and i said i'm newly certified i have another job but i want to kind of hang out in the gym get to know you could you give me some pointers you know i'm going to belong to your gym and and that way i can kind of see how you do stuff and I wasn't interested in taking on clients. I was interested in watching how he did stuff and he was great. He, and it, and allowed me while I was kind of trying to figure out if that was the route I wanted to go to actually see how he ran his business and gave me the opportunity to kind of test those waters without, you know, throwing the baby out with the bath water for <laughs> lack of a better term. What a great thing to do if the experiment is, what is this environment? Who are these people? I'll buy a gym membership. I'll go. I'll get immersed in this thing I'm trying to embody. It's a great way to do it and a, and a wonderful way to label an experiment by kind of jumping ankle deep into something. And I know when this time was, Holly, because I actually had you come over and I think I hired you for a session. And yeah me how to do some curls and I bought my first set of weights and so you really did play with it in a number of ways um I wonder if I want to segue off of that to something you just said about two or three minutes ago which was you also took time to reflect like it wasn't always creating an experiment what was it like to reflect and it was either after the training or when you were at the post office sometimes in reflection you realize okay, I know what I don't want to do, but, but what was the reflection like for you? So with the training, I, you know, I, I did take on a few clients and, um, while I was, uh, kind of transitioning and, and trying to figure out, do I really want to do that? And, am I going to stay at the post office? I couldn't, the thing it is with my schedule at the post office, I couldn't really dive in wholeheartedly to it unless I quit the post yeah. office. It was pretty consuming. And some people get in jobs like that that are consuming and you just don't have any more bandwidth to reinvent off of. Zero bandwidth to reinvent off of. And so I, I knew that it was a skill set that I had, but I kind of like, stepping back and assessing it, I kept saying, you know, like it's, it wasn't like it was so important to me that I was ready to like make that leap and leave the post office, like throw caution to the wind and go. And I, for me, I, and, and this is not for everybody. I am, I am a person who literally will stay to the point where I can't stay any longer. And then I leap, even if I don't have a plan. Yeah. Be because I just, I am a person who does not like to be unhappy where I am. Right. And so. But you also don't like to make people feel bad. So you almost get to the point where the pain is on your side and your shoulders too heavy. 
Yes. And a lot of people who are listening can relate to that. I've done that before. It's very exhausting, but we do it as a human being. We do that thing. 100%. We, we want to make things nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and, le- and I'm, a, I'm a person who like always has that thing of like, I'm a networker. So I always want to leave on good terms if right. I can. Don't burn those bridges. <laughs> don't, don't, don't burn those bridges because you never know when you might actually need that bridge somehow, even though it doesn't relate. Right. And so, so I think, um, I think there, there just is, there have been times where for me, uh, taking, taking time away on like a vacation was helpful for me. And, and, and while I'm not in the thick of it all to, to like really kind of sit back and in those quiet times sitting on the beach, that tends to be where I go on vacation, just really kind of assessing, you know, what is it that I'm happy about? What is it that I'm not happy about? And um, having conversations with my girlfriend and, and you know, allowing her to be a mirror for me because sometimes when you're in your own shit you don't see it do you? <laughs> you you don't see it and and you know having her to be able to say no i i think it is time for you to go because you get up in the morning and you take longer to get ready to leave you um you you literally hit the snooze 10 more times than you used to. And those are all things that we as humans kind of don't, I think, necessarily uh, pick up on. But yeah, we, are, we don't know when we're doing it. We need that reflective surface on the outside going, did you see you did that? And you go, oh, now you, now you point it out, but we don't see it while it's happening. Yeah, no, we don't see it while it's happening because we're too involved in all of the, 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 the pain, I think, of, of, getting out the door to go do something that we don't really love right and (laughs) and and knowing that you have to do it a lot of times because uh, financial reasons you know whatever whatever obligation you know or or whatever whatever those things might be that force you to do it so i think that for for me vacations were a, a good way to reflect uh because it takes you out of the environment and right. allows you the time and space and having somebody who knows you really well um, to, to kind of be that mirror for you and, and call you out on where things stand. Right. And, and I also do think, you know, for me, having you next door as a coach and, you know, as a person who I could go to and just like ask questions, like, you know, right. um, it, it, it's, it's a way of, helping you kind of assess where you're at and why it's not working. And you may not have the answers to the next thing, but at least you figure out, well, this isn't working and these are the reasons why. Well, that's, that's something you've said two or three times today that really hits home for me as I watch other reinventors and as I went through my own, because people listening may not know, but I've reinvented myself personally and professionally about a dozen times. So Mm -hmm. And, and even a personal identity or two there. Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering, do you have any specific examples? Do you have an example of when you can say, okay, I decided to abandon the path I'm on and I went to a different path? Uh, what, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That. Um, there was probably two or three distinct moments in, in my time of my career paths, um, that I can pinpoint. Um, and they, and, and the, the events were extremely jarring and clear. Okay. Um, example. So when I, and I talk about this in, in the first half, so I don't want to, I don't want to belabor it, but, um, when I was working in, uh, social work, for lack of a better term, behavioral uh, therapy with kids, a kid basically, I mean, I had been doing it for a number of years. And one of my favorite kids had had an event 
where we had to basically put him in psychiatric hospital. Right. And he had a meltdown right before my eyes and there was nothing that I could do. And at that moment, it, it was literally like a, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. It was, it was, I cannot watch another kid do this again. Yeah. So, so you knew you had to abandon the old life. And we did talk about that in the story, but it's such a, it's such a palpable moment, but I'm glad that if somebody doesn't get to listen to the first uh, part of this two part series, they don't miss that. And so you decided to abandon and did you actually know where you were going? You just knew you needed to leave something behind. I just knew it's, I'm done. Like okay. there was just this, this, this inner voice. I don't know. Did uh, your gut feeling that just like, is like, I cannot do this any, like not one minute longer. Like right. it literally was, um, that jarring for me. And so it, it literally was like, I left work that day and immediately was like, I got, I I have to find another job. And in your mind's eye, Holly, is that okay? Is it okay for somebody to just know I need to move away from something and I don't know where I'm going and I know I'm going to find something, but I just need to know that I'm moving away. Yes. Okay. I, I, I subscribe to that wholeheartedly. And if anybody has trouble moving through that, I will help you because I have done that numerous times. Um, You know, uh, my, my move from California, working in California to home, back home, um, when I was working with people with developmental disabilities, I had been working literally like weeks and weeks um, of, you know, 60, 70 hour work weeks and, and living in California, driving, you know, on the freeways for like, you know, hours. Like my life was literally, I got up, I ran, I went to work, I stayed at work until the freeways cleared and then I would go grab dinner or go play racquetball with some friends and then go home late at night and go to bed and do it all over again. My life literally, I wasn't living. I was, I was driving and working. And there was a, a point where I was working at a facility and the, uh, the administration changed so the, my, my boss that had originally brought me there was different. Um, the responsibilities had become extremely stressful in the job that I was doing. I was doing a great job, but there, there was just this moment where I was standing there with my, my one of my, because I was, I was the program director, so I had many people that Uh, worked under me and I was standing there with a shift shift supervisor all the residents had left the building and we were watching the Rodney King riots unfold oh my goodness and she she said turned and said to me that's my neighborhood because we're watching this on the news are you kidding no and I said you know what you go I'll cover your shift you know, go, go do what you've got to do. And as I'm standing there kind of like, you know, soaking in everything that's happening, I'm just like, what, what am I doing? Mm. You know, why, why am I staying in a crazy place like this, that literally people are like looting each other's houses and I, I don't have a life. And or at least and not the one that you want to have. Not the one that I want to have. And and so I basically gave my two weeks notice within like two days of that event. Wow. And and the guy said, Well, where are you going? And I said, Home. 
So you knew where you were going. You didn't know what you would be doing, but you also knew I need to abandon that old path. Yep. That's another palpable story. This is one of the reasons why I love your reinvention story. It's, it's so, <laughs> it's so Holly Tuckett. It's so full of these epic moments that you bring into life. Yes. Um, is there <laughs> Yeah. Is there a time where you created less of an experiment, but more of making an arrangement around new events where um, you could tell your story? Like maybe it was the gym where you walked in and said, here's my story. Do you have another example of where you could just arrange something where you could tell your story, hear you, yourself speaking it and do something that gave you more insights about what you had ahead of you? what I had ahead. Um, trying to think. Trying to think of, of I mean, I'm always telling my stories. <laughs> so you are a storyteller. I, I am a storyteller. That's does it help you when you do that to hear yourself and go, oh yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Definitely. I think, you know, I think that, um, there was a time when I was working at, uh, at, at PEI as a coach and, um, I had come back from vacation and was talking with Mike Noyce, yeah. another, another coach. Right. And you know, that's the benefit when you, <laughs> when you have friends that are coaches, they're great. They're great to talk to because they will, they will reflect back and they will, they will kind of help you hear, hear what you're talking about. Right. Right. And we, cause we had gone to Europe for almost two and a half months. And while I was on vacation, um, I, I had an extended amount of time to actually be present with my camera and, you know, taking photographs and video and, you know, really just immersing myself in the experience and, um, came back from that vacation and, and Mike, Mike and I kind of had our, uh, cubicles the whole entire time I worked there. He was my cubicle mate. Um, and, there was times where I would have downtime in between uh, sessions and I, I was editing uh, uh, something that I had created for a family member or something. I don't remember exactly what it was I was working on. And, um, you know, we started talking about, you know, he was asking me about it and, and asking me about vacation and did I, you know, did I shoot stuff on vacation? And, and I was, I was like, oh yeah, you know, I, and, and, you know, he was like, he, he, we finished having that discussion and he goes, you know, I don't think I've ever seen you so animated than when I've heard you talk about so editing he and reflected back to you. Yeah. Yeah. He reflected back to me. He's like, he's like, you know, you, you really become uh, excited when you talk about anything that has to do with camera and editing. And, and I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty passionate about it. I, I really enjoy it. And he's like, is that something that you would ever pursue? And I was like, well, he, he's like, cause you make stuff for people. I, I know you do because you've, you've worked on stuff during the downtime here. And, and I said, yeah, but I mean, I'm just doing it for fun. You know, I'm doing it for <laughs> that's not I can't take that seriously I, I can't take that seriously Nobody's it's just kind of a that. <laughs> kind of a hobby it's like yeah. it's like a hobby and <laughs> and he was like he was like well you should investigate that because you you seem pretty passionate about it and I was like oh yeah and I I just kind of didn't really like I was like yeah maybe you know I've always talked about maybe making a movie, you know, um, and I, but I was like, but how did, how does one even like go about that? So it was just kind of like this, like, yeah, okay. Thanks Mike. But, I could, but how, but yeah. See you later. And 
See ya. And so I think that, you know, it, it put a little like seed, it plant, it helped plant a seed. Right. And this was probably the first time where I, it wasn't, there wasn't a time at, at PEI where I was like, oh, I hate this job. Now it was, I really want to try something else. So something bigger was calling you. So instead of being uh, moved because of pain to abandon an old path, you were abandoning an old path to move to a greater game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So how did you arrange new events from that point on where that seed was planted to help you explore that world more? Yeah. Um, I, I know I talked to you and you connected me with another filmmaker that you knew right. that was going to the University of Utah and she was actually working on a documentary film at the time. I had a, a, a great conversation with her and, you know, was like, you know, how, how would I even go about getting started? Do I need to go back to school? Do I, you know, what do I, what do I do? And she was like, you get a camera and you start shooting. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm already kind of doing that. And she's like, well, then you, then you shoot with purpose. Like, you don't just uh, shoot stuff cause you, cause you want to see stuff. I mean, cause that's most people are like, they shoot family events or they shoot a vacation or they, you know, um, you shoot with uh, telling a story in mind. And, um, you know, I, I felt a little intimidated and afraid because I didn't feel that my skill set was enough. So I, you know, said, well, how would one learn more? Yeah. And um, she said, start to volunteer for uh, on other people's films, you know, start to, you know, find places to volunteer. And I said, oh, how do, where do I even look? And at the time, this is when Craigslist was still big. <laughs> And, um, you know, she's like, get on Craigslist. There's always student films, you know, people asking for help. And, you know, most of it's unpaid, uh, especially with student films. And, um, and if you're new, you probably are going to have to do some, some unpaid work anyway. Right. And so, so I started literally like reaching out to people that i didn't, like I would read their what they had listed on Craigslist and was like, okay, it's not a, they're not shooting a porn, um, <laughs> and and I can I can I can probably trust that I'm not going to end up in a ditch dead somewhere, yeah. um, and I ended up kind of getting networked in with uh, a few people that they they saw that I was one of those kind of people that jumps in and just observes and then does like if you're a if you're a doer on a film set and you, and you can pick up quick on how things work you, you will always get asked back wow. and so i started getting asked back i think that fits for for most people if you will get things done if you'll be a participant if you're volunteering you're going to get more opportunity yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you about how you feel like you created small wins? You know, because getting to that place where you started the abandonment of the old path when you saw that meltdown of that little child and you couldn't deal with that anymore to the point where you were, <clears throat> excuse me, on stage receiving your award for your documentary film. <laughs> years there were months there were weeks there were hours how yes. did you, how did you get small wins to keep the like the dopamine going and the serotonin the dopamine yes i had a win the serotonin it's going to be okay i'm just figuring this out how did you do that yeah um man it, it it was a lot of um baby steps there's there's a for cr for creative people yeah. I think it's really important. There's a, there's a, uh, like, I think it's like about a five to 10 minute video by Ira Glass. And it talks about, um, as, 
when you when you start on this path, you you've seen all the really, really great films. You've seen uh, all of the best things because that's what makes you want to be a filmmaker, right? Or that what's what like you if you want to be a writer, you have read all the best books and oh, you want to you want to write like that, right? An athlete, you've seen all the best athletes. You want to be an accountant. You've probably paid attention. Who has really brilliant uh, financial uh, prowess? Yes. Yes. And so he talks about the fact that you're gonna you're gonna start out, and it, because you don't have that same that same vast amount of experience that that other person has had to get to that point. Right. Because we all start out and suck. And <laughs> thank and, you for saying that. Yes, we all start out with very little skill. Very we little skill set. Latent talent and latent strength, but the skill comes after practice. Yes. And so you have to create in order to like the thing that you're gonna go through this like painful process of creating stuff that you watch it and it's not hitting the mark. Right. And so for me, how I kind of went through the, the path of, okay, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there is, you know, I finished it because a lot, that's, that's one of the things is in, that I had in working with people who are younger than me and people that were students, a lot of, uh, student filmmakers don't finish. Yeah. I've seen and, that. and adults, I think that have gone through life and I, and from just me, I don't do something unless I'm going to do it to completion. And so I'm a completer, even if it's like not the best thing I've ever done, I'm about completing. Great. And yeah, notice that about you. And so even if it like is painful and I'm like months, like it's still not where I want it to be, but I'm working on it. You know, like there has been times where I've, when I started out where I had clients and I was just like, this is not ready, even though the deadline is there and will you give me an extension or this is what I can give you now, but I'm not happy with it. Okay. And so, um, Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes I would lose clients because I was leaping out beyond what my skill set was. Um, and so for me, I think where I calculated my wins would be is like, okay, I did it faster this time. Or, uh. <laughs> you know, I, pu I put out the product faster this time. I learned how to tell the story in less minutes this time. Um, you know, there were just like little things that uh, I didn't make that mistake in production that I made the time before. Like, wow. yes. So, so, cause you know, there's so many things when you're a filmmaker that, especially if you're what I call the one man band kind of filmmaker, you're in charge of how, the set is dressed. You're in charge of running the camera. You're in charge of making sure the audio works. You're right. in charge of the talent and how they make, how their makeup is, if they need makeup or their hair, or, you know, or whatever. And so when you're in charge of all those things, eventually you're going to drop the ball in one of those areas. And so, um, you know, they're, they're just, were just for me, the little small wins were like, okay, this time I didn't forget to check my audio levels, you know, or I, I remember to push record. <laughs> uh, you know, there, you, there, you gave yourself credit when you get yes. improvement. Something else I'm noticing too, though, small wins. Um, and I don't know if you did this. We've done this here at, at Soul Salt. Uh, first time we failed at our first online offering, we put a big post-it note on the board and said, Failure number one. That was wind under our wings because it was like, well, at least we were out there doing something, right? Yes, yes. I'm hearing you give yourself credit. I'm doing something and maybe a little faster or a little 
easier, more elegantly. Um, okay, one more question for you. Thing is, to prime this, to be very transparent, um, I wanted to give Holly a chance to look at the questions and some of the concepts we're gonna cover today. So I'm gonna ask you to go back to those, Holly, and just look and yeah. see. I have a checklist and it looks like we've covered most of those but uh, organically, but I'm wondering, is there something we haven't talked about that you really feel is important to tell us before we wrap? Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think as far as like, you, you know, you asked about like little wins, like yeah. making a feature length film uh, takes more than a one man band. Okay. And so for me, it was building up over time a team of people that I I started to work with on a more regular basis and saying, okay, that person, I want to do this on my next film. And then that person I want to carry on with me to the next thing I do. And so there were, there was a building out of not being a one one man band anymore that that was really important um, to to go to the next level right. to be able to make a film that was long enough to get distribution because that's the other thing is like I was making short films up until then mostly um, I had only done not on not for myself but produced feature length films for other people so you know, there were, there were, there were strategic things that I did to set myself up to get to the point where I directed a feature film, um, okay. to understand. So, right. so, you know, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And you figure out which side you're going to start on and things like that. And you surround yourself with people who know more than you know. So I do think that those types of things are very important. Um, I never claim to, to know everything and I never claim that I've ever arrived. I got asked in a, in a podcast not too long ago by some younger filmmakers who have a podcast and, um, you know, they, they basically said, you know, so now you, you know, you've made this feature film. That's all, you know, you, you've arrived. And I was like, no, 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 no. I, there's so much to learn and there are so many more stories to tell. It's not like, you finish this film and it's like people, people aren't going to come to me and be like, Hey, direct my next film. No, you constantly are in the art of the hustle. You're, you're hustling to get the next thing. So looking at the next project, looking at the next project, finding the next story, you know? Um, and I think that goes for any career path, like anything that you choose, you should always be looking to what's out on the horizon and planning how you're going to get there. And sometimes, you know, I'm not a great planner. I can always see what's out on the horizon. My problem is, is I'm, I'm, I'm a leaper and, and I, and, and then I just figure it out when I get there. Like I figure it out, like as I'm treading water, I'm like, Oh, there's, there's a rock over there that I can, so I can quit treading. And then I need to get over there and I see an oar and a tiny rowboat, like, but I'm going to have to swim there. So like, but I've already started swimming, you know, that's just how I do me. That's, that's how I do life. And I don't know if that's like a recommended way, but it's my way. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not a huge planner. I'm, I'm a, I'm a doer. So, so, and that is one, one thing that I, in the process of going through, you know, I'm 52 almost going through 52 years of life. It's taken me going through this career path to realize that that is my personality yes. and rather than trying to like put that square peg into a round hole. I'm, I embrace it. I, I embrace the fact that I, I'm a leap and then figure it out person. And so I allow myself uh, the, the time of, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, <laughs> like to, to, and know that that's just gonna be uncomfortable for a little while. And, yeah. then, and then I will find that rock and I will find that rowboat 
and I will be able to go to where it is that I can totally see out in the future. Right, right. That's beautiful. So, you remind me of Peter Block's book that he says, the answer to how is yes. Yeah, yeah. I am a yes person. I'm a yes, let's, and and because everyone else that I know is like, well, how are we going to do it? I'm like, I don't know. Let's just, but we're going. We're, we're putting, it. we're putting the key in the ignition and we're going. We're going. Like, I'm not going to wait. So, <laughs> so I think, you know, for me, that's, that's just something that if you're a person like me, embrace that and know that you're okay, you know, being that person that's a leaper and not a planner. Yeah. Cause some people are planners, some are leapers. Okay. Holly. I would know that there will be people who are going to want to know more about you, how they can follow you, how they can watch your films. Where do we send them? You Okay, so my, my film, Church and State uh, Documentary, you can find it at churchandstatedocumentary.com. Okay. Um, if you go to the top right now, I have a link that you can, it's like across the top of the website that you, if you click on that, it tells you where all the places are that you can find our film. We're on iTunes, we're on Amazon, Hoopla, which is like a library thing, um, all the on-demand. Right now we're in the on-demand phase. So we don't stream, we're yeah. on-demand. Yeah. So, so you gotta pay for it, unless you do Hoopla. Hoopla, you don't have to pay for it. It's a, it's a library thing, you get like, I think it's, five free movies a month or something like that. Wow. So, um, with, if you have a library card. So, um, anyways, uh, that's where you can find me, uh, as far as my film goes that I have out right now. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, just Holly Tuckett. I'm on Instagram at Tucky FHP. Um, you can find me on my website, which is flyinghatproductions.com. Right. Uh, I don't, I have a YouTube channel, but I don't post there. I have a Vimeo channel. I post there, but I need to like curate my stuff a little bit better. I just have everything there. Um, but you know, some of my favorite things that I've done that are on there. Um, I did a, a series with a photographer who, um, would grant the wishes of kids who had cancer mm -hmm. and through his photography. And, and I'm going to get all emotional. Yeah, it's a, it's a big cause. Yeah, it was a really big cause. Um, and so we would, we would do an, a, an experience for the kids and I would do the behind the scenes of that whole, of that whole shoot and tell the kids story in a way. Wow. So that, that, those are some of my favorite videos. And they're out there? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. So if you yeah. want to know the heart and soul of Holly Tuckett, the filmmaker, they can see Church and State, but then to really go see some of the other work, they go out to... Uh, Just Vimeo. It's a, you can find me at Flying Hat Productions on Vimeo. Okay, so Flying Hat Productions. Holly, this has been another rich, deep conversation. <laughs> uh, any final... Line of advice or favorite quote you want to share? Man, um, just go see that Ira. Just anybody, just go go watch that Ira Glass thing. Uh, you you know can find that? it on YouTube. You if you that? just if you just uh, Google Ira Glass, um, and oh, let me. I mean, I'm going to find you the quote right now. I'm going to find you the link right now. Because yeah, I know I can find it. Okay, it's called Ira Glass on the Creative Process. And you, that's or Ira Glass on Creativity. It's listed a few different ways. Okay. It's, also, it's also called The Gap. It is on YouTube. So if you put in The Gap by Ira Glass on okay. YouTube, you will find it. All right. I think it's like a super important especially as you're transitioning, like you have to give yourself a break. You, you're not going to be perfect as you're transitioning. And you, there, there are, there is a gap of where you are and where you can see yourself in the future. 
like you know what you want to create or you know the life that you want to have and you can see it in your yeah. mind's eye but you're there's a gap that you have to bridge and he talks about that and it's fantastic well, I am going to, as soon as we wrap this interview, I'm going to go out and find it and listen to it. I've been inspired by you. And I'm so glad that we are friends as well. Absolutely. Uh, because it's, you know, we'll have to go out to dinner again real soon. Absolutely. <laughs> For the listening audience, you've had a real treat. Two parts, very deep information from Holly Tuckett of how you reinvent your working identity, which then reinvents the greatness, the bad acidry that's inside of you gets to come out. So Holly, thank you so much. You bet. Thank you, Lynn, for, for everything. Yes. For your friendship, for your coaching, for just being a fucking badass to follow. <laughs> it's, 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 it's great. And, and you know, your, your uh, kick-assness that you take into your, your workouts inspired me and I'm doing the same going into 50 being healthier and stronger so thank you you're so welcome